Hey there, I'm Cyberchroma, and welcome to part 22 of Making an Abstract Adventure! Welcome back! You might notice that something is different, and by something, I mean everything. We have made the transition from a 2D platformer into a 2.5D platformer. So, huzzah, a lot of things have changed, but surprisingly, a lot of things are still very similar as they were before, as we'll get into. Now, with this episode, I think that in the past, some of these development logs have been a bit disorganized, and uh, a lot of just rambling and stuff like that. So this time I wanted to actually lay out kind of the itinerary of what we'll be covering here today, I suppose. <laughs> so, um, starting off, I just want to, I guess, go into play mode and show off what things are looking like now. So, uh, it's kind of the same sort of thing gameplay-wise, where, again, it's a platformer, we're moving left and right, we can jump and do all that sort of stuff, except everything's in 3D now, so we actually have a, a third dimension to play around with, but all the gameplay is still stuck on one axis. So, running through here, we just have a bunch of things that we can jump around on, uh, some moving platforms, go up, some sort of curved ground, we have a thing here that we can crouch under, things like that. Now, we have a lot of, like, stuff in the background with everything being blurred and uh, stuff like that. We'll be getting into how I went about doing that later on, but first just quickly Getting through here showing what exists. We also have the spikes there uh, Testing that now you'll notice that our character here does kind of have animations. I was able to sort of salvage um, The animations that I made before onto this uh, 3d object, which I'll show how I did that But it's gonna be something kind of temporary eventually. I'm gonna want to um, Like completely reanimate this which will hopefully be the same thing, but yeah, so now we're now at the end of this sort of uh, area here. We had a bit of a wall jumping section as well. Then we have this um, sort of door thing that if we interact with, we just kind of teleport back to the beginning, just so it's in a, a nice loop. And then here we also have one that brings us to the end. So ta-da, I can also show off if we fall to our deaths, that is what happens there and the scene resets. So functionally, everything's very much the same. Um, and yeah, so, but uh, I guess the biggest well, the biggest change would be environmental stuff, but before we get into that, I want to show the programming, I guess. Uh, everything that's changed there. So if I go onto our uh, character, Q is the main one that um, we've been focusing on for the last little a few episodes. But eventually, we'll, eventually we'll get to Cal. I just want to get one character, you know, working and all of that. So on our actual um, object here, you'll notice everything's pretty much the same. The main difference is that instead of a rigid body 2D, we have a rigid body, and that's basically the bulk of the changes. Changing anywhere where there was a rigid body, 2D to being just a normal rigid body, most of the settings I think are the same, uh, and then um, any sort of 2D colliders, changing them to their 3D equivalents. And our um, Q character here has a capsule collider instead of a sphere collider, so that when we um, are dealing with crouching, we can sort of shrink the collider on one axis, more or less, so that is the reason why that is the case. Yeah, now coding-wise, I'm not going to go through every script right now, but... Um, over on our player move script over here, I'll just use this as an example. Most of the changes were just going wherever there was a vector 2D, changing it to vector 3. Wherever there was rigid body 2D, making it rigid body. And here, um, here new vector 3 instead of vector 2. Sometimes adding an extra 0 on the end because we're not really doing anything on the Z axis. Um, force mode instead of 2D, just normal force mode. It's just, yeah, there was a lot of similarities between what needed to be changed. Um, oh, rotation wise, that was something that actually I did have to do that was completely different. Um, I'll get into that in a second, but one other small thing is that anywhere we had like on collision enter, on collision exit, 2D, just again, dropping the 2D and just making it the 3D equivalent. So rotation though, that was something a bit more tricky. So before we had, when we were dealing with sprites, we had, um, when we wanted to flip moving left and right, we would just make the scale negative one. On a 3D object, that was causing more um, problems, and I didn't really want to necessarily be doing, like, scaling it like this for a 3D uh, object. So what I did is instead um, dealt with rotations, and actually if I go back into play mode, I can quickly show this off. So when we change from moving left to right, we actually sort of uh, spin around, and ideally this would be, like, where the, the player's face will be uh, when we actually make better, um, like, character art and not just these, um, just a cube and a sphere. So, yeah, so programming-wise, that was just a matter of, yeah, down here, I don't remember what this looked like before, but basically just, um, 
instead of yeah just having a quaternion dot uh spherical interpolation is what that function is similar to how we did linear interpolation with like the camera to get it to smoothly move to a spot or actually no right up here how we get one ember to smoothly move from one spot or from one ember to another um except dealing with rotations instead and doing spherical linear interpolation because we're dealing with angles and all that but long story short the these calcul this calculation is what um worked for us here i think again yeah I'll tell, i don't remember exactly like what the change versus what things looked like before but basically um now we ha i think we were using front direction in the same way but basically when we go from moving one way to the other way front direction oh yeah i changed that instead of being a boolean it is an integer so that if it's it'll be positive one if we're moving to the right negative one if we're moving to the left um and then i think i yeah just changed everything here for it was like front deer equals true or front front deer equals false just multiplying it by negative one which will make it go like left or right and then i can use that in the calculation here to either be spinning to look left or spinning to look right and yeah long story short it worked i guess so um but then on any other script for the most part it was then also just it was just changing twos to threes and dropping the word 2d on a lot of things yeah more or less that was uh all it needed to be done so back over in unity next up um yeah so on cue with the animations i kind of touched on that earlier um so i kind of cheated this a little bit i still actually have all of the um things here from when when we had the game in 2d in fact one thing i can do that kind of looks interesting i guess uh if i go and enable and disable some objects here we can see our the remnants of our 2d character this looks interesting um is it weird interesting like style i, I don't know if i would necessarily like go with it but if you want to do this in your game, go for it, I suppose. But yeah, so having like this 2D character in a 3D environment, it's an interesting style. I just don't know if I would be able to personally pull it off. Um, Cause like as the same problems that I said before with my 2D inabilities when it comes to art. Um, yeah, so me personally, I'm gonna be going, basically making this 3D. So the cube that we had making a face and hair on it probably, and I'll also now be able to um, get rid of these knives and go back to just having the, the bow staff that uh, I originally was going to have because I don't have the limitations of the z-axis that I had before when trying to animate this. But uh, I do think that this just conceptually is a cool idea. I think it looks pretty interesting. But uh, there's also some problems with um, the depth of field thing. It's kind of making it blurry at some points. But yeah. Anyways, th that was just a cool thing I wanted to show. But uh, onto actual how I then implemented the, the cube having the animations of the body was basically just... So this was the, like, all the parent-child objects that were all the uh, sprites. Whoa, don't want to move anything. Uh, and then this was the, like, bone of how we... How do I put this? This was the skeleton thing that we had before on our character of how we animated it. Where, basically... So this root bone controlled the animations of the body of our 2D character. So just by having our cube as a child object of this root bone, it copies all of the... Um, animations of the body that we had before so that's how it's doing all the squishing and stretching stuff but eventually i would like to just reanimate this properly in presumably blender um or maybe i'll animate it in unity i haven't decided on that yet but uh yeah all in all that is how that was done and then uh, oh cal is also just um he's just a sphere he doesn't have anything special to him just yet but uh actually do i even still have oh yeah i still have his like concept art but um he doesn't even have a shield anymore so it's not entirely accurate to begin with yeah so that is that next um onto environmental art the biggest change i would say here now one thing i'd like to show is something i'll get to later there's some post 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 eh, i can speak english post processing effects um here that is making our scene look a bit uh better more vibrant like saturation and darkness and all that this is what this looks like without any post processing and bam this is what it looks like with that post processing effects so um on, but on the actual like environmental side how i went about doing this was through blender in yeah my 3d modeling software that i choose to use so um basically i went and made this entire level all as one giant um thing in uh blender now that everything's all like different objects and all that but it's all one blender file that i then imported into unity and then ta-da now um i know some people might go about like making like individual um like objects in blender and then compiling them all in unity which i experimented with using but i found that 
uh, this process of just doing it all in Blender ended up being easier in the long run because I can do a lot of like quick edits to objects if I want them to look different. Um, so I can have like, so I have for example like this building here and then this one above it that's like a crouch space. Yes, it's the same thing. I just kind of duplicated it and spun it around. But then I was able to just quickly um, like extrude something out of the bottom there so it looks like they're kind of connected. So it's, it's not just like floating in midair. So with it, like with this sort of building style, I want things to look like they're, um, you know, they actually have weight to them. They're actually, you know, things that exist. So for example, how I had this uh, crane in the background that's sort of holding up this and like these um, moving platforms there. Yeah, just some the yeah, liberty of how I um, just went about making this level, I suppose. So yeah, that is that. Now in terms of actually making, I'm not gonna go how into I, I'm not going to go into how I made every like individual thing, but um, a lot of these are different objects within the same like mesh, like this like sort of vent thing, uh, this uh, uh, solar panel kind of thing. But uh, it was just a lot of making cuts in different places, and then going to like face mode and extruding things, extruding things in different places, scaling that kind of stuff. You can look up a lot of tutorials on how to do Blender stuff. This is not a Blender tutorial necessarily, but. Um, yeah, I tried out different styles with different buildings. Like this one looks more like apartment style, I guess. Um, this one I just kind of messed around with it, just moving things in different directions, extruding some individual windows and having this uh, these sort of glass it's like glass area thing there. Uh, this building I just kind of went crazy with and just uh, made a lot of cuts, um, scaling things in different ways, giving things different colors. This one's just windows. Um, yeah, or if I actually were to use something like this in an actual like level, not just this concept thing, I would probably do some kind of like, so like this one's like all black windows. This one's all like the glowing cyan, glowing cyan windows. I probably make like I could select individual ones and make like some of them cyan, like some of them like they're on and some of them like they're off. But for the purposes of this, I didn't need to go into that much uh, detail there. Yeah. Now another thing as well. Um, when I started this, I started off by just making this this sort of blocked out environment, and I still have all of the um, objects of how I made that. So. I started off just making this like block layout of what the level was going to look like. There's these green things here that represented the, um, that, the sort of scaffolding. Uh, and then there was these two uh, blocks here that represented the two positions that that moving platform would be in. So this is like the lower portion. This was the top portion. Uh, then over here as well, same thing of like the left and right portion of where those moving platforms move to. Oh, this door doesn't really need to be there, but that was like a temporary of like just showing that there was going to be this sort of teleporting spot there. Um, yeah. And then also if I, even if I look at it from a top down view, there's like more going on this way than this way. There's just sort of having where the player is be this kind of zero access sort of thing. So there's some remnants of what will be some of the environmental stuff in here. But um, for the most part, it's just kind of like the blocked out collision of what the, the level will be. And then actually uh, with that, I then um, ended up using these models for the actual collision of the level. So if I go back into Unity, actually I want to make sure yeah, this is not going to save like this. Just undo in real quick. Yeah, okay, so back in Unity, over on here. So this is the rooftop level thing in Unity. So I have this blocked out level, and all of these have mesh colliders on them, which arguably could be just um, cube colliders, but I didn't... Oh, and yeah, even some of these aren't completely accurate, but it should be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, all these just have mesh colliders that could be cube colliders for most of them. But it's all, like, simple enough for now. Oh, and this one could also be taller as well. Yeah, some of those aren't, like, completely updated. I'd probably have to go... Actually, if I just go and, like, hit reset? No? Uh, anyways, whatever. Anyways. So, um, yeah. So then those are the colliders for this level. And, yeah, they exist just fine there. Then I went and duplicated all of them. And then, yeah, made this improved art out of it. So was then able to take the individual blocks of level and then turn them into just better things of art, I guess. Yeah. And then I also just made um, all these background buildings just to have it look like a, it's a city. Ignore the fact that they're all the same building duplicated. In an actual in, um, environment, I'd try to have different buildings. I just wanted like a quick mock-up of what this sort of uh, city environment could look like. And then this thing below here is meant to just be sort of like fog, like we're so high up that you can't see the ground. Uh, eventually, I think it'd be cool if I could have them be moving around, have an actual, like, yeah, moving fog of some kind. But, um, yeah, right now, actually, as well, this environment is pretty static. I'd like to have, ideally, I'd like to have some moving stuff in the background as you're going through a level. But um, that'll be stuff that's more planned out in an actual level. This is just a sort of concept thing. Um, none, none of this level is going to be in the actual game. Some of the environmental things that I made, like this, like, crane or an individual building, 
might be, but um, this was just an experiment. This was like a um, me testing if I think I could actually pull off this 3D art style for this game. And I think by this point, the answer is yes. I'm confident that I can do the 3D art necessarily to, um, in this style, be able to make everything that we need to make for our game. I hope so. Uh, I haven't done much with like characters yet. I'm That'll be a later step, but yeah. Okay, so next on the list, uh, no, sorry, one last thing I wanted to say is that these cyan windows, they actually are glowing and how I uh, went about doing that was over on the model itself. I have, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay, so over in materials, where like on um, like on the import settings for this object, uh, most of these are using the default material or like the imported material from Blender. There are a few like this faded cyan that I actually made a material for that you can set to um, to omit uh, or to have an emission color. Um, so I did that, and then I also did the same for glass and rain material here to make them transparent because you can't really do uh, like import transparent materials or emission materials from Blender in that way so i just yeah so basically from that i was able, able to make all the these windows actually glow and then this glass is like actually see-through and then the rain which i think we're talking about next yes so the make the rain also uh transparent so going back into play mode like once again so you'll notice there's a rain effect here um yeah so how i went about making that going back out here so first i made this uh rain uh, object here and then gave it that material to make it sort of transparent um then over as a child object of the camera so it's actually it might um yeah so well okay it doesn't necessarily look like it's everywhere it does kind of look a bit like it's in front of the camera but it does have some depth to it and it'd be it better be better to do this having it just be in front of the camera as opposed to everywhere because it'd be a very um hardware intensive and all that kind of stuff so basically just in front of the camera so we have the camera like here in the world just right in front of it it's just a uh, particle emitter that's emitting the uh, mesh that I made with the that material and then yeah, yeah it's just a lot of settings here actually I guess I can just go through all the settings real quick so all the ones that are actually check marked off so here with like render it's set to mesh and that has the raindrop and the rain material I think the rest of this is the same on the actual particle system it's set to loop um, has a certain lifetime go between different speeds different sizes uh, yeah it's set to or uh, over here delta time is set to unscaled which gets the effect of if i pause the game it's still raining which i think it's a cool style that makes it look like there's more uh movement i suppose um like more stuff moving even while it's paused it's not completely static so yeah then a uh, certain emission time there's like a hundred uh the shape is like a rectangle and then has a certain scale to it yeah basically yeah, it's just an emitter that's just emitting along, or that's emitting all the raindrops in the way of the camera, more or less. Yeah, that is that. So next, post-processing effects. So I already touched on this a little bit, but if I go over to, so I also have a um, thing called lighting. There's two lights here. At the moment, it's not that fancy. It's just a main light and a backlight uh, that doesn't really do much because you can't really see it, but uh, just kind of light making everything behind here, even though you can't see it, just not completely black. Um, yeah, eventually I'd like to have more actual light, light, lighting, like an actual, a bunch of spotlights all around to have there just be more detailed lighting, I suppose, but this works okay for now. But then we also have this post-processing processing, uh, effect that also has the nice touch of it actually goes over the like screen camera, which is pretty nice. So I don't just have to be in game view to see the changes. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna go into a full like tutorial on how post-processing effects work that um is something i had to look up myself and watch towards myself so they exist i know because i found them so uh but pretty much just from the in the same where was it so in packages the same way of how i dealt with getting packages um with the 2d pixel importer st or what was it yeah yeah like the pixel like 2d animation stuff that i had before there's also one for post-processing effects um and then having that installed allows you to then on the camera have a script called post-processing layer um and then have an actual empty game object called or that has a, a script on it called post 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 processing volume <laughs> and then you can make a new profile that has um different effects there is if i go into the game view for a second there's this one that has the um like the black stuff going around like the black like shadow going around the edges of the screen there's this one that's the depth of field 
ta-da. And then the main one that's like the color grading that makes things a lot darker, more blue. Uh, I'm trying to go with, um, so color scheme wise, color palette and all that. Uh, I'm trying to go with like a monochromatic blue color scheme for this environment. I think it could look cool, I suppose, with like the rain and all these buildings are like white, um, just with the way that this city is, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so everything's kind of, there's just kind of different shades of blue there. The entire city is then going to be surrounded by this big black wall as well. Like, no one's allowed to enter or leave, that kind of thing. Yes, dystopian cities and all that. So, um, yeah, this was all just, like, messing around with different um, settings. There's also, there's, like, a lot of really cool effects that you can achieve just by, like, messing with values. Um, I want to make sure not to mess anything up too much because I spent, like, a while trying to, like, just fine-tune values to get the, the uh, effect I was sort of going for. Um, yeah, but you can already see just like me messing with these values. There's a lot of things you can do. I can make the level look completely different, um, just by hue shifting it. Although then that does kind of mess with like the player's colors. So yeah, there's that. But, um, yeah, all in all, yeah, post-processing. It's something I hadn't really like used that much before, but I kind of wish I did earlier because yeah, there's a lot that you can do with it to make your game look more unique and not like every other like, indie Unity game that exists. Because a lot of people do say that, like, oh, like, Unity games have the same style. That is because of a lack of post-processing and more, um, like, shader effects and stuff like that. I don't know if I'm going to get into doing, like, shader effects with, um... Mm, I don't know. Oh, I, yeah, shaders are something I've experimented a bit with the pa in the past, but... Right, okay, anyways. Like, right now, it looks... Like, the game looks fine as it is. Uh, that might be stuff I, um, look into down the line. But for now... It works. So, uh, post-processing effects, yeah, that's that. If you want to go with this exact, if you want to get this exact effect, I guess you could just copy these settings. I'm not going to go through each one of them one by one, but yeah. And then uh, another thing is, as well is that you can have a different, like, profile for different scenes so that I'm hoping for different levels to look, have di uh, look different, have a different feel to them. Yeah, so next up, oh, I wanted to, so I've, since the last episode, with making this jump to 3D, I've been doing a lot of replanning of stuff with this game. I have up here my game design document. It's currently 19 pages, although a lot of it at the bottom is just kind of a checklist that I don't even know if it's accurate anymore. I haven't looked at it in a while, but um, yeah, I'm not going to go through this whole game design document, but I thought I'd just like, I don't know, you can quickly have a look at it and see where the planning of this game is going to. I've showed this before, but it is so much different now. Um, mainly, I've been planning a lot of, like, story stuff. Right now, I'm trying to plan a lot of, um, like, more gameplay-related things and then tying it to story. Well, I, I am trying to put, like, uh, gameplay first, story second, but now I'm trying to, like, link the two, and I have, like, a good, like, a good broad story, I think, that could hopefully go well. Um, actually, this is a paragraph here is, like, the chunk of like of what the story is basically having to do with uh so this is all like backstory stuff that would be like revealed over the course of the game uh, again this is all very much subject to change it's very much in early stages but uh okay yeah basically yeah there being these dark creatures called the attriments which is actually latin for ink i believe um and yeah they were like sealed away but now they're like um they're uh, where was it they are like starting to like break free and then there's like this dark ooze covering the land everything's getting all possessed and corrupted and all that sort of stuff and then our two characters are then having to stop that more or less that's <laughs> that is that and then each, both of them have like their own individual stuff going on with like cal being a knight in q um being in this like uh dystopian city and then like escaping from it and stuff like that so yeah more stuff to be planned a lot more in depth and all that but um i just thought i'd like share some of that and it's again it's all so stuff that needs to be planned a lot more in depth i'm also really bad with coming up with names for things most of the time i still don't have an actual name for this like land i guess um even like some characters still need names but that is stuff that will happen later i suppose yeah next um yeah so that basically comes to what i've done up to this point and now going forward i have potential things to do so one improving our characters um i don't know if that'll be the next thing i do but i want to try and get back to that point that we were at before where we had ladies like, characters actually having like a face and hair and all that uh, i was considering maybe making these characters more like a little more humanoid like still being like this one blocky and this one more spherical but having like a body and a head being separate to so i have more like animation options i don't actually know if i'm going to do that i was thinking about it more and 
by staying with this like cube style where it's just like a cube with a face and hair and like hands that might just look more unique compared to if i tried to make it more humanoid like yeah even if um i don't know the humanoid thing was more detailed it just might not it might look more like not as unique as as it could be so i might stick with this cube style i don't know i'll have to see what it looks like it might look really bad when i try to make it and then a humanoid style might look better but um i still do want to go with like this one's more blocky and this one's more like round um yeah and then i also still have to design more like other characters and npcs and all of that fun stuff but uh one thing i did want to do is sort of get the environment style down first and now try to design a character style that fits this environment so that was the main thing that i wanted to go for because the environment uh was gonna be the is kind of like the harder task to well okay making characters is hard but like with how much environment stuff i have to make just deciding on this like low poly um like blocky style and then deciding this is the style i want to go for art wise now i need characters to actually fit that art style so yeah so there's that as well um so i have this sort of like rooftop area done i wanted to experiment just making another environment in this art style just a, a more just like more stuff of like designing something different but it, making them actually like how do i put this like uh it actually makes sense they don't look too jarringly different like they're two different art styles um with this demo that i want to make i want there to be sort of three mini levels one in this um like nighttime rooftop area one where you're um cal going around one where you're um q going around no sorry this rooftop area would be where your um q going around rooftops and all that one with cal where you're in sort of a factory and i want there to be like a lot of like nuclear waste and all like green and stuff like that um as well as probably a lot of like brick wall sort of stuff so i might try to have a color palette of like orangey browns and then like greens and like lime glowing greens i don't know still figuring that sort of stuff out but uh yeah and then i want a third area where you're actually both of them uh having to do the switching between both of them to do stuff in a underground sewer so i can test more in like internal environment stuff uh, like it's instead of just uh, all this external stuff i mean the factory would also be decently internal but um like it would still it's probably going to be decently like massive inter interiors so yeah it's still exterior to an extent in terms of how i'd be designing it like it might not have a roof um but then i want to design an actual like so an area where you're both of them having being in an interior environment so i'm going to go with this like underground sewers kind of thing uh that is the hope we'll see how that sort of stuff changes i'm also designing these three demo areas based on in the actual game past that those are going to be three levels in the actual game so um a lot of the like stuff that i'm making for those and demo environments are then going to be in the actual game in fact the levels just might end up being exactly how they are with some slight alterations because a demo will have to be different regardless like if this is a level that's like a lot later in the game for a demo i'm going to want to start with like teaching the controls and stuff in an actual in the actual game i don't need to do that so then some things might be cut especially near the beginning there or just altered in that way but anyways yeah so that is the plans um for now as well as there's still a lot of remnants of the 2d-ness that i need to get rid of so like this um all these sprites at the top i don't know how much i'm going to change them but eventually i'll probably make better art for them maybe i um was thinking about maybe i try to make like actual 3d art that is floating at the edges of the screen i don't know for sure if i want to do that it might just it might not look good if i try to do that as well um there's still stuff like this where these arrows that kind of cut through the ground now they're still all 2d and i need to make like 3d versions of them although with actually um this uh shuriken throw specifically i had an idea for how i could go about that so this character here uh q um with her attack i was going to go back from instead of having the knives going back to the having the bow staff that i originally planned but wasn't able to animate in 2d with holding stuff in two hands with 3d i'm more confident i'll be able to um pull that off so what i'm thinking is instead instead of this being like throwing shurikens i was thinking of um leaning more into magic a bit and then if you have this staff having uh how do i convey this let's go into paint real quick so if this is like the character okay how do i how am i gonna draw this so basically having a thing where she like holds up the staff and then you're aiming with like the arrow thing and then shoots like a fireball out of the staff in whatever direction that you're facing um so then that way that actually works a lot better with the animation stuff because then i don't have to animate like 
like animate like uh aiming in a certain direction whether it's like up down left right whatever and then like throwing in a given direction while also potentially running or like falling and all that instead i could just have when you throw it she just like holds up the staff and then it just fires the projectile in whatever directions so then that would make that sort of animating and programming a little easier and i'll also with that i was also planning on like in this thing uh maybe tapping more into like magic to some extent i mean the game name was an abstract adventure so i um and like one character is a knight so i don't know i'm thinking maybe I, like yes i have this city here but i might maybe change it more to be more i, I don't know like it's, I don't, okay i don't know how to like, explain what i'm trying to convey but basically maybe having some more like fantasy elements because that might just be better to have i don't know it's still stuff that's being planned um it could be also interesting to have like fantasy things but then also have this like straight up dystopian city with like skyscrapers and all that i don't know or maybe it wouldn't work i don't know <laughs> i still have to um yeah plan a lot of stuff there and just see if it works or not just trying out different ideas i suppose anyways yeah so then uh sprite wise but then if i do kind of want to get rid of most of the 2d sprites that i had maybe not with the environment the um ui but with like that arrow thing and even um like this interact arrow when you get close to things like that's well, yeah, it's for some reason getting blurred with the, the effect sort of, but uh, yeah, sort of cleaning up some things with that. Now, that, I guess, wraps it up here. Now, one thing I did also want to do, just to end things off, um, now that I've explained what I'm going to be going, doing next, basically, video is done, but um, there have been a lot of cases where I have made a lot of, like, minor changes to code, and I'm not necessarily showing all of them, because I'm, like, forgetting to, because it's just a bunch of minor things to a bunch of different pieces of code. So, it's because this is kind of, like, a new beginning sort of thing, because we are now, we're still making the same kind of game, but going more, um, like, 3D, a lot, of, it's been a big jump, I suppose. Uh, I want to just end things off by, I'm gonna just open up every single, like, code thing, actually, I'm not gonna do it that way it's gonna be a bit messy i'm gonna open up every single script that i have here and i'm just gonna scroll through every single piece of code that i've written so far just so you can all see i guess like being on the same page with what i have here and if there's changes that i've made it that i haven't that i have made that i haven't explained then yeah so yeah let's just do that i'm not going to well talk that much about like going into depth without everything here i've explained it all in like previous videos but yeah so here's the button multi script here's the button once script these are all like level related things i'm not doing this in any particular order i'm just going from top to bottom um oh yeah so yeah this was the button timed script the button weighted script for just the four different types of buttons that we made the fade move script that has to do with the doors of how we go between two different objects or two different um like places in the world the follow script that I can scroll over this way a little bit. This was on the camera or, or no, this was just a generic thing that we made for any time we wanted like something to follow something else. Simply enough. The grow and shrink that the interact arrow uses. The moving object controller thing. Ta-da, this one is a lot longer. This one just controls the moving objects, being able to move between different points. Yeah. Then uh multi-talk oh, well this is something that i made and haven't used uh yeah that's not important i guess so object hover a lot of these i also haven't looked at in quite a while um object hover that was for the things in the ui that hover up and down with like the collectibles and all that object spin that is the same thing of just making them spin it's also just generic enough to be able to be applied to different objects uh a push script that i didn't finish uh, yeah, there's a lot of, like, yeah, temporary stuff in here. Uh, a spin script. I don't know why that's different than object spin. Oh, I see. One uses uh, the transform. One uses um, physics and rigid body stuff. So that's a thing. Uh, talk by interact. Ta -da. This was, yeah, the talking to NPCs. The talk on trigger. Same sort of thing that just uh, activates in a different way. We actually like, collide with things. Again, there's also the changes of going from 2D to 3D. Um of getting rid of the uh, 2d handles on the end of those now on to player stuff there's the camera focus this was uh choosing wait hold on yeah no oh this was um something we made a while back where you would enter the trigger of some like enter a trigger the player would stop the camera would pan over to something wait a second to like show it off and then it would pan back to the player and then give the player control again so that is that 
Then there is camera, camera follow that controls the actual like camera following a player, whether it's following either Cal or Q. And then, um, yeah, there's it also it kind of does stuff with a player change script to um, to change which character that it's following. And there's all of that there of how it's doing that. Da -da. The circle glide. Um, yeah, this is the script that allows our um, Cal character to fall slowly when we hold the left shift key. Then there's the lunge slash. Um, yeah, I think I would have had to change some stuff with this with the actual rotation or no. Yeah, and on the player lineup script, when we get to that, I think I had to do some, like, rotation stuff of going to 3D being a little bit different, but we'll get to that when we get there. This was the launching through the air ability that the that Cal has. Now, circle main. This one is the central script that all of these other scripts that, the, the, uh, that Cal has, how they interact with each other in the order that they run in, and then being able to just disable this script disables all of them, more or less. So, yeah. So it's easier for other scripts to disable the player. Then there was player attack. This was just how the player attacks and it, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Then player change. This was how we are then changing between two, the two players. And then, um, yeah, and then I think there was some, where was it? Yeah, so some stuff here of, yeah, which player would start active. And then this works together with the camera follow of if one character does not exist in the scene it'll just follow the one character like the other one uh so then we can have levels where there's only one character and not both of them like the rooftop level uh eventually <laughs> then we have this player collect this was um coming into contact with a collectible and then doing stuff with that the double jump we're hitting this before the normal jump but oh well i uh, just want to do this in order so this was how we double jump i think we've looked at this like several times uh, in the past. The player ground check, this one has gone through many revisions, I believe. So this one just has to do with, yeah, how we test whether or not we are on the ground. Uh, and then also having a thing of right when we leave a platform for like a split second, we are still able to jump. So yeah, platforming stuff like that. Player health, this one, oh, this one I did change recently with going to 2D, where instead of getting a bunch of sprite renderers, it gets mesh renderers. Um, specifically the mesh renderer of, like, the cube or the circle sphere. Um, yeah, and then just disabling and enabling those as it needs to to do damage. Uh, and then also just having trigger stuff to see if we hit a hazard an enemy taking damage. Also dealing with death, with which at the moment just resets the scene, but eventually it might do different things. If we have checkpoints, it might just, like, move you back to the checkpoint, uh, stuff like that. And maybe reset some things like bring enemies back to life. I don't know if it'll do that manually or if it'll just leave it being resetting for now, but that'll be something that we'll get to when we get to the point of needing to make checkpoints. Um, then we have a player hit script. If we um, hit, uh, what is this? Yeah, so, oh, this is on the attack collider that when we attack something um, to destroy those objects. So this was like when we had the, the crates a long time ago. Um, player interact. This is similar to the, no, this is yeah, interacting with, um, yeah, there's a, uh, a group thing of if we've interacted with something on this interact layer, which was layer 12, then running different code, which was like this interact test or the fade move with the doors or uh, the talk script to talk to an NPC and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then having that interact arrow as well. The player jump script. Um, yeah, this one just tests if we're grounded and then if we aren't, then we jump uh, and then also have dealing with follow falling. Uh, uh, yeah, and then a lot of different stuff here to, uh, to dictate being able to jump, like, do a small jump or a long jump, depending on how long we're holding the, uh, the jump button, and just different things with falling there. The player lineup script, this one was for the arrows that we have with uh, aiming to throw the shuriken or to launch through the air, just having that arrow exist to be able to aim. And yeah, this one just gets, depending on what buttons we're holding, it calculates a certain rotation. And then, yeah, this one I think did change because before, when dealing with 2D rotations, you're just dealing with like a float value, a decimal that goes from 0 to 360 or higher if you're going beyond that. Um, but you're just dealing with like one number more or less. In 3D, you have a quaternion, which is something more complicated, but you have like three dimensional rotation stuff. Uh, but more basically, this was then just a matter of like linear interpolating or spherical lin spherically interpolating between uh, different points. Um, yeah, but all in all that then turns the arrow to the direction that it needs to be facing. 
Then player main, or yeah, uh, player main uses both the circle and square main so that if we want to disable something on a player, we're just getting like, we're just having to get the player main and not have all the tests of like, if circle main exists, then do this. Or if square main exists, do this. Just be able to like disable both the players easily um, without having to get a bunch of different references to different scripts. Player move, um, like one of the first things that we made with uh, actually moving our character that, um, yeah, basically just moves our character left and right and turns our player and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, then some on collision enter stuff of if we're touching a moving platform to um, gain the velocity of that moving platform or if we're touching something that's slippery, then being able to slide like we're on ice. Next is player push. What was the, oh, this was for the wind, right? Yeah, so, um, oh, and this does get that push script that I looked at before that was like up here that just has some variables. So this was for wind. Um, yeah, basically if we it come into contact with, oh, I never actually changed these. Ah, so yeah, I actually haven't changed all of the code that I've needed to, but this one will just be a matter, of, I'll do this later. It'll just be a matter of getting rid of the 2Ds and basically just that. Um, yeah, so this was having like a block of wind. When we enter that trigger, we get pushed in a certain direction, gaining some velocity of some kind. Then we have the spin, which, no, wait, hold on. We already did that. Uh, where were we? Player push. That was there. So next is swim. Swim, I know I haven't done stuff with yet. Um, yeah, I still have to get, get swimming working again, especially with the rotation stuff. There's just going to be more things I'm going to have to do with that, which should be doable. Um, yeah, so... Yeah but, yeah, but this was allowing us to, when we enter a body of water, to swim in a direction, um, depending on what button we're holding. So it sort of changes up the gameplay a little bit. Eventually, I do want to have, like, an entire level that's, like, all underwater, or mostly underwater. Um, but then other levels will have, like, sections of water in it, perhaps, where you, like, go into a, a pool or something. Or, I don't know, other, whatever other body of water. Like, in that factory level, maybe there's a point where you're actually swimming in the toxic waste. I don't know. Um, or actually, I kind of wanted that to be a hazard, but... I don't know. Anyways, so that was that. Then the player swim boost. This one also still needs to be converted. This was, if you hit space, it's kind of the equivalent of the jump. You just get, like, you get a boost in whatever direction you're moving in. Simple enough. The shuriken, which might get changed if I make it a fireball or whatever. Yeah, so I mean, um, just if we press a button. No, this was, no, this is the thing that was actually on the um, uh, shuriken itself. So that if it moves in a direction, then it calculates its own velocity. And if it hits something then it gets reflected into a different direction. Uh, and then eventually there might be more code for like, if it's an enemy, it'll get destroyed or something. Yeah. Then we have the square crouch. This one, um, ooh, let's see. So this one, yeah. When we hit a certain button, we like crouch. So we get like half the size, our collider changes so that we can go like under tight areas. Um, yeah, simple enough. We can only crouch when we're on the ground. Oh, this one also controls the sticking. Yes. Yeah, so we also, I didn't really show this. Well, this is something that we could do for a while, but, um, and I believe I did mention this in the last episode, but we can also, if I find anything of wall, we can stick to the walls if we hold the crouch button while in contact with the wall. That's something that we can do. So this controls doing that as well. Um, simple enough there. Well, it's a pretty long script that isn't exactly simple, but yeah, that's basically all that it does. The square main, which is the exact uh, same thing as the circle main. So exactly the same of controlling what um, scripts run in what order um, for controlling the square character. Then we have the square shuriken throw. I'm also just realizing all these are square. I might have to change them to Q, but I don't think I'm gonna bother doing that. So um, yeah, so this one controls the actually throwing of the projectile, like aiming it and throwing it. Yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, more or less, basically, yeah, if they press a button, where is it? I, I where, yeah, where are you? Oh, no, no th it, this works based on the lineup script. So this works on the lineup script. If we let go of the lineup thing, then we get launched in, or th then we, um, throw the shuriken. Yeah, and we also can't be swimming and stuff like that. We have to be, uh, if we're not on the ground, we get, like, a boost. Oh, no, no, we can still shoot it if we are swimming, but, yeah, anyways. So this just shoots the, the shuriken in whatever direction. Next is the wall jump. So this one is similar to the jumping kind of. Um, so this one just is if we're in contact with the wall and as the cube character, we if we hit space, then we jump in a, like both up and to the side. Um, and as well, some unclusion enter and exit stuff to determine if we're in contact with the wall. Something that's mostly a wall. There's some stuff here of we can be slightly 
like the wall doesn't have to be fully straight like it'd be slightly on an angle and we can still jump off of it um i believe i actually also had the same thing with the if i go back to the ground check for a second because i didn't really cover that um this also has like the ground can be slightly off center basically like it can be curved ground and we can still jump off of it basically um back to this so yeah and then yeah it makes us jump off the wall and also right when we hit the wall we fall slowly for a second to be able to have, just have more time to jump i suppose and with that that's all the player scripts oh we're almost done then on the ui for the ui scripts um there's this one that is the black fade that controls that black screen that's in that covers the camera when we like transition between things um more or less then with uh we have collectibles ui this is just controlling the ui of if i go back to unity these two these things here that are collectibles that i also might redesign them for 3d stuff but um yeah basically just controls uh their like um how what number that they are displaying that's what i'm trying to say okay it controls what number that they're displaying and yeah and then it also controls how it like go slides on and off the screen there's the health ui which is just controlling how much health that we have this can also change i haven't i don't think i touched on this in quite a while so i guess i'll just restate it it does have the thing where we can control like how much health we have because that'll be an unlockable thing a lot of these abilities will be unlockable like you'll start with only being able to like move jump and attack i guess and then you'll unlock like the wall jump the crouch the glide and like you'll start off with three health and then you'll get four at some point and then five so there's some a sense of progression there that is the the hope um so with that yeah it controls how much health that we have and then as we get hit it updates the ui and then slides onto screen and all that sort of stuff pause ui we this just um yeah it has a reference to the pause screen if we hit the pause button it brings all that stuff onto screen uh and then controls being able to hit the different buttons with the like wasd to go between the different options hitting them runs different um things of code or yeah so hitting the different buttons will control which one is active and then uh running these different um functions when we press the different buttons that at the moment are all kind of temporary because they don't have the ability like they're just not functional yet because like we have resume uh options will eventually bring up an options menu progress will bring up some kind of progress thing m maybe um yeah and then exit level will like return to like the hub or the main menu or something like that that is that last script so ui slide this one controls the actual having uh objects slide in and off of screen so yeah this one yeah pretty short basically just if uh this building is true it'll slide into screen if it's off it'll slide out of screen more or less Whew. okay that was a doozy so all in a nutshell that is all of the code of um this game and how everything from a programming standpoint is working so far uh now in terms of in the project video uh, in the project uh window yeah we have the, the scripts there like that we have um scene wise we oh we still have the old scene here um I'm not gonna say that oh yeah we the uh, old scene here although it's kind of completely fallen apart so i'll probably delete that shortly but it kind of still exists um prefabs a lot of these are still they're like 2d variants that i'm gonna have to sort of change like these buttons that we made i'm gonna have to just make them 3d but i'll get to that at some point um models we have all this stuff and then one single physics material oh yeah this was something i had to make 3d as well because it was a 2d physics material before so basically everything has no friction um so that i can deal with all of that through code myself yeah then uh, a font that's used on like the pause screen and the um these two numbers here and then animations this is still all the 2d stuff although the um part of these animations is still being used on the cube character but eventually i'm going to redo that in a proper 3d sense but it still exists for now yeah so with all of that said and done that is a complete i guess recap of everything that the game is up to this point i could go through uh, there's still more things i could go through but i'm not gonna bother i think that's just that's enough for now to get everything on the same page yeah so next time um i don't know i think either i'm gonna do character stuff or i'm gonna be starting this factory thing so that that is where i'm going from here with the goal right now of just planning the game after the demo but right now i'm just trying to also get a playable demo done to get feedback and to actually just have something that is properly playable that like other people can play i guess if that makes sense 
So with that all said and done, I think that wraps it up for this episode. So thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you.